Welcome everyone to this Clubhouse event, Your Energy, Health, Be Responsible with Empowering Solutions, EMF, a frequency that is affecting us today. I would like to start by raising the vibration in the space that we're in now, by calling for the highest possible vibration and calling forth the truth to come forward into our discussion this evening so that we may see the truth in all that we see, so that we may hear the truth in all that we hear, and so that we may speak the truth in all that we say. Shall we be in that frequency of truth, and shall we have nothing less than the truth? And shall we call for the power divine feminine to bring balance back into our world, showing us the way through honor, respect, and gratitude? Shall we call for the power divine feminine to bring balance back into our, into our world, showing us the way through honor? respect and gratitude, shall I call for the power divine feminine to bring balance back into our world, showing us the way through honor, respect and gratitude, shall we call for the highest possible vibration, calling for the highest possible vibration, calling for the highest possible vibration. Now, if everyone has water, ask that you take a sip of water and ask for the water to hydrate your brain and your body. Water is the medium that holds memory and will assist in the flow of information that we share together here this evening on Clubhouse. Now take a deep breath in, bringing in peace. And releasing and exhaling, letting everything else out, releasing everything out. Taking another deep breath in, bringing in joy and gratitude. And exhale out. And another deep breath in, bringing in life into our bodies. And exhale out, releasing all that does not serve us. And like and Veritas, everyone, I call forth the oneness and truth of the information shared by each and every one of us on this call, calling in that frequency of truth and all that is with honor, respect, and gratitude to you all. And for those who are unfamiliar with the term, the greeting and Lakesh is the Mayan greeting for oneness, signifying unity where everything and everyone are interconnected. It is that idea of community where we can share with one another ideas, goals, and aspirations. And veritas is the Latin word for truth, to see the truth in all things. So Enlakish and Veritas is that declaration of oneness and truth in which we are clearing our spaces, the space we're in now, that we may be able to bring forth a truthful, elevated, and enlightened discussion this evening, clearing away those ill thoughts that we tend to pick up and carry with us from our everyday life experiences. Remember, our words have power, so it is important that we use our words carefully, using words of upliftment, encouragement, and enlightenment. And by doing so as a collective will help us to transform our spaces and places into higher frequencies that will result in better experiences in our lives and assist in raising the vibration of those who we meet and interact with. So Enlakish and Veritas, everyone, with honor, respect, and gratitude. I would like for everyone to again hold their waters in their hands and with intention of, in mind, Send the frequency of Enlakesh to your water. Then take a sip of your water. Assist in signaling and incorporating that elevated frequency of Enlakesh into the water and then into the cells of our bodies. And utilizing this technique will assist in the ease and flow of the information that we share this evening. Enlakesh and Veritas, everyone. So today, I'd like to talk about some environmental precautions that we need to be aware of. Specifically, electromagnetic frequencies, the EMFs, resulting in electromagnetic radiation, also known as EMRs. So EMFs are electrical and magnetic wave energies, energy waves that are in our environment they are a combination of electrical and magnetic waves. So these include X-rays and gamma rays, which are of a higher ionizing frequency waves. And though these waves, the higher ionizing frequency waves, are more damaging to our tissues and to our DNA. And this is what we find um, 
in um, where I, I was a radiologist and we were using equipment that this was pretty, this is the type of electromagnetic waves or mag frequencies that we use in order to use for diagnostic purposes in people in the hospital. And then there are the lower mid frequency non ionizing form of electromagnetic frequency waves. And these are found in our electrical power lines, our kitchen appliances, such as the microwave ovens, our infrared radiation, invisible light, and electronics. The electronics include the uh, other electrical appliances, such as the shavers or hair dryers and electrical blankets. But our, our most common source of radio frequency radiation are from our wireless communication devices and equipment. So that includes our cell phones, smart meters, portable wireless devices such as our tablets, laptop, computers, TV, radio, satellites, stations. And then also, I also have to put in MRI since I was a radiologist too. But anyway, so with the advances of our technology, it's become a huge, huge concern for us being exposed to these radio frequencies with long-term chronic exposure. You know, there are many studies out today that show an increased health risk from these low to mid level radio frequencies. So health concerns include headache, fatigue, memory changes such as memory loss, dizziness, tremors, feelings of depression, sleep disturbances, difficulty concentrating. So they found, there are studies that have been found that symptoms are significantly higher in people who live closer to cell towers, particularly if they live within 300 meters of a cell tower. You know, and over long-term use, it can cause damage to the DNA and weaken the immune system. There's also a rise in certain cancers, particularly brain tumors and significant malignant brain tumors at that reported in several countries the netherlands england denmark australia they report these significant issues with increasing cancers and the implication is when people are holding their cell phone to their head and an, an example of that is i don't know if you remember the attorney for the oj simpson case johnny cochran he's the attorney for that that won the case well, a couple of years later, he ended up dying, passing away from brain cancer. And they said it's because he had that cell phone glued to his head. He was constantly using it. So because of these statistics, there are several countries around the world that have taken a stance to help reduce the incidence of health problems from cell, cell phone usage. So France passed a law in 2015 banning wi-fi from all nursery schools because of the vulnerability of the of the developing brain in these young children they also banned smartphones in children less than 15 years of age not from just only the harmful emfs that were produced but also because they were addicting and with addictive use comes increase ex in exposure and there are more than 20 countries that have taken steps to minimize cell phone exposure to children, especially with their developed, since children have the developing brains that are most affected and most vulnerable, with France being at the top of the list. But it's interesting how the US state and local health authorities and the medical associations only recommend reducing the use of cell phone and wireless phones to protect our children from radiation exposure. You know, is this the only measure that we can take in the U.S.? Any comments? So there um, was also an article a few years ago from the U.K. where they, oh. Okay. So there was a um, an article a few years ago from the U.K. where they reported increased sudden deaths from ambulance workers after introducing the a 5G smart ambulances when they were first introduced. 
which I find interesting because despite that news, they still came out with the smart uh, ambulances out in the United States. And, you know, it happened to be that I was in, it was in Chicago at, the, at Rush where they introduced that, the, the first smart um, ambulances in the country. Any comments? So then let's talk about the smart meters. These are devices that are installed in our homes by the power companies to calculate the amount of electricity that we're using. And these are actually being installed, replacing the analog meters without our permission, without of us, of us even knowing about it. And these meters, as a matter of fact, have a similar frequency to the cell phone. So it's pretty strong. And these smart meters are sending data out continuously. So uh, PNG company, uh, which is a utility company, they conceded that electrical meters send out an average of 10,000 pulses per meter per day and a maximum of 190 pulses per day. So this form of radio frequency, uh, microwave radiation, is actually penetrating our entire home and our bodies. And it's, it's data that's transmitted, transmitted from meter to meter. It also generates dirty electricity, which is considered unusable energy. So it's producing even unusable, wasteful, harmful electricity that's affecting us. It has created an increase in power costs, using these smart meters pose security and privacy issues because it can be easily hacked with information sold to interested third parties. So the symptoms from these smart meters, insomnia, tinnitus, stress, agitation, irritability, difficulty concentrating, heart problems or palpitations, fatigue, headaches, weakness, visual problems, nausea, flu-like symptoms, skin rashes, blood pressures, I can go on and on. Changes in the menstrual cycle, changes in children's behavior, miscarriages, ADHD. You know, and it's particularly uh, common to, for people to report uh, feelings of palpitations from these meters. So these utility companies argue that because the radiation being admitted is considered non-ionizing and it's safe. There are numerous studies, however, that link, you know, adverse biological effects of non-ionizing radiation from the use of these smart meters. And the vulnerable groups of people that are sensitive include people with medical implants, compromised immune systems, such as those autoimmune issues, children, pregnant women and the elderly. And if you have a pacemaker, the utility company warns you to stay six inches away from the meter. <laughs> so, any comments? In the kitchen bear test. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is fiction gratitude. This is Tiffany. Um, we recently, one moment, honey. We we recently got. Am I able to be heard still? Jade wants yes. to hear too. Okay. Yes. Please speak um, to we recently um, got solar, and I may have said this on another clubhouse. Um, and the electrical company, oh. just without us even, um, you know, saying we wanted it or anything else, they were like, okay, well then we're gonna co we'll come out and install your smart meter um, because that's what we do when people get solar so we can monitor it and mm. know if you're overproducing so you know and i was like well we don't you want that for it, right I mean, right the solar, right that's right like we are owning the solar and i'm like is there any way like i didn't know right i was shh, jd stuff. Mm -hmm. i was like is there any way for us to get the solar and not have a smart meter and have it attached to what we just have and they're like oh yeah right. there's a way but nobody does that they were like then how would we monitor your usage daily and i'm like i don't well, want you to, to monitor my usage they'd, daily I know, they'd have to come out let them come out you right know, exactly people, yeah there are people that are actually paying extra money a couple dollars more per month just to keep the analog in 
Yes. But it's going to be benefit from the long run. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Well, we don't even have to pay extra. It was just, they were simply just saying, you know, then it's not going to be able to be monitored every single day. And then you're not going to know if you're using more or less energy. And um, so it was, it was just interesting. They were like, no one's ever called us to ask if they could not do that. And so Mm -hmm. we Mm -hmm. now are able to have solar and, and harness the energy of the sun without having it connected. Um, to a smart meter simply because that's we asked so the question. great yeah right that is so great that you have that you know more of us are going to have to start getting that because they're even another thing it's too on an aside they're talking about blocking the sun right <laughs> you know? right yeah, yeah and it's like come on now you know to prevent people from using solar like I solar energy i suppose but i say just go for it and get as much solar energy as you can Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, it's interesting because we are in this whole new level of gratitude um, for every component of our energy now. Like even we're leaving the lights on in the house and Jade's like, that's not kind to the sun. You know, let's thank the sun for, you know, the energy that we're using. We need to make sure this light's turned off. And so it's just shifted this whole level of perception, you know, that we have as well and, and this level of gratitude. And also, supposedly, um, at least in California, um, from an energy standpoint, the electric prices are going up to borrow energy from other states. So there are these huge, massive electrical transit, um, I don't even know what to call them, uh, wires, stations, something, going from state to state. And some of them are what have been causing the wildfires. But no one's talking about that. People are just saying it's Mm. because... (laughs) <laughs> combustion of the <laughs> the ground from the sun you know it's yeah, just right yeah. there are so many um be uh more sustainable i guess Oops. is the word tiffany yeah oh okay we lost you a little bit okay. sorry i was okay it's yeah okay. i was just saying no, there's no. benefits of being more sustainable you know in that sense as well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely absolutely thank you for sharing that that was uh important information well received <laughs> absolutely thank you <laughs> stacy are you still there yes in the question veritas with honor respect and gratitude in the question veritas honor respect and gratitude i'm so glad that tiffany brought it up because what immediately did come to mind was the story when she was saying and speaking about the solar panels and how they were trying to monitor it and uh-huh. this idea of the the smart meters it, it deepens my understanding every time we have the conversations because I didn't even make that connection of all the harmful you know implications of them even being present and thinking about that in addition to you know all the EMS from Wi-Fi and thinking about ooh, the school buildings how students are now being gifted with all these uh, Chromebooks and sitting mm-hmm. in front of a computer for most of their day and in instruction and the exposure that they're receiving there. And I know, you know, in my teaching time, I've seen students with the Chromebooks in their laps or the iPads in their laps. Mm -hmm. So all that direct radiation that they're receiving there, but then add that extra layer of, I'm pretty sure, and I'm gonna look into this more, that schools are using the smart meters. So the kids are getting even more exposure to this radiation, you're welcome, honey. Um, and so, you know, just knowing that, you know, our children are so susceptible to the radiation and how that's, you know, all these increases in ADHD and even thinking back to the pandemic, Mm -hmm. like they were in the household and all of this radiation was just, you know, there and then they go back to a school building and it's there too. So really just thinking of solutions of how to, one, help parents be aware of what their children are being susceptible to within the school building because a lot of times yes we do use tablets and things like that to help you know offset you know when we just need a time of quiet or you know the Mm -hmm. kids just want that technology Mm -hmm. time but finding solutions of how to help uh, reduce the exposure and how to um, help minimize the impact because yeah, our children, they have the ADHD, and um, and I even saw something recently that was saying that, you know, ADHD is not technically a disease, it's more of a coping mechanism, so that was an interesting perspective, and mm-hmm. seeing, you know, mm-hmm. all these different components, like, yeah, I see why it is a coping mechanism, but 
really helping them to have, you know, a strengthened immune system and then helping them to understand what these devices and things are doing to their body so that they can, you know, step into a little bit more, you know, um, autonomy with, you know, taking care of themselves. So thank you for bringing mm-hmm. that forward. It makes me think even deeper, like, what more can I do? Um, but yes. also educating myself to educate them so that they can educate their <laughs> friends and, you know, it just keeps going. So thank you again. In the Kesha Veritas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You. Thank you. Thank you for sharing in location Veritas on respect and gratitude. Thank you for sharing. There was also an um, uh, uh, article or, uh, that I had read where they stated that there was a school who uh, someone went back and, and re- was doing a research project and kind of went back to their school and they were in their 20s and found out that there were so many deaths that came from their class including people, the kids, people that were their age in the, in the twenties and, and, and the teachers. And so, uh, the expert, this expert, um, uh, EMF monitor person, and I'm going to give you his name in a few minutes. He stated that he went on his own cause it was, I think a family member or a friend and he went and took readings in the rooms in in the school and it was like really high so he sent a letter um a nice letter to the school principal and the school letting them know about it and that he would be willing to you know take measurements of the whole school for them and then he said uh subsequently a couple few uh days later he got a letter from an attorney saying not to ever come back to the school you know, otherwise litigation would be placed against him for doing that. And so it was just crazy, crazy. I mean, and, and, you know, people, they're not really cognizant of what it, what could potentially happen to them until it happens to them or somebody that's close to them, you know, and that's, that's a shame. I know a chiropractor out here in California who, um, one of the first things that, he does for his patients is he loans them an EMF reader and has them mm. go throughout their whole home to do exactly what the guy w- did in the school, you know, right. to, to be able to better assess the ailments he's seeing in his patients. Yep. 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 It's, it's more common than people realize is actually is really, really more common than they realize. So now let's look at 5G and compare it with 4G. So 4G from like a scientific or physical physics standpoint has longer wavelengths and travels along the surface of the skin, let's say when it interacts and, and touches you. And then, but 5G is millimeters in wavelengths, more insidious and is absorbed through the skin. And it will naturally cause the skin to rise in temperature. And because of the shorter wavelengths, there have been, um, there, more you're able you're actually picking up more of the electromagnetic waves or frequency waves the harmful waves and then this results in increase in the health issues including cancers which is now seen in in within a shorter time span for these people for people and younger people and then they're also the kicker is they're also talking about 6g now coming out So bottom line is that EMFs are all around us and it is how, uh, and it has become a a major, major concern with regards to long-term chronic, from long-term chronic exposure, a major health concern. I, um, I'll be there in one moment. Um, I, I wanted to bring forward two things. One, my cell phone broke and I had like, a 6S self, <laughs> that's probably why it broke, no matter how much yeah. I kept it cleared, right? But it broke and I went to just get a new cell phone and I was like, can I get this same cell phone? No, they, they like, don't sell it. No, yep. and then I was like, well, I what's know. the closest? They're like, it's three times the amount of money than the brand mm-hmm. new 14 this and that. And so I made them show me how to turn 5G off on my phone because you have yeah. that option on the new ones to yeah, turn you do. off 5G, you which do. was huge. Um, but there's a, a beekeeper, I don't know if I've said this before, um, here, it's a, he's a monk actually, and he 
um, had all of these bees on his property and then they put up a cell phone tower and all of his bees died. And he didn't, oh. he oh. didn't make the connection at first and then, you know, kind of realized what was going on and he actually got cancer as well. Um, so then to put his, to know where to put his hives, um, when he got new hives, he walked around with a cell phone and wherever he didn't have service, he realized that the, the cell phone waves weren't as strong there. And then he put mm -hmm. his hives back there and then uh -huh. they flourished. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just everything um, in the environment's affected, right? <clears throat> yes, Bias, it is. Right? It, it definitely is. You know, and, and um, you know, we've become so dependent on, on our electronics. You know, so I want to discuss what do we do? You know, I, I, I just wanted to um, bring up, you know, I, you know, it's just affecting us everywhere. You know, have you ever noticed you know, the feeling of fatigue being in traffic for an extended period of time. You know, and it just dawned on me. It's like, you know, people come back home, come from work and they're in traffic and they're like, oh, I'm exhausted. They think it's from work, but no, a lot of it has to do with being in traffic and exposed to the electromagnetic radiation from the other cars, your car and everything, the vehicles, electronics. You know, so uh, go ahead and in the kitchen veritas. In the kitchen veritas. Um, so one solution. Okay, honey. Um, one solution that I found that was introduced to me by a friend was um, organite uh, pyramids. So it's a combination of uh, copper um, and different crystals that's supposed to help um, reduce the exposure to EMFs, and you can place them in uh -huh. different places. So I have, I bought multiples. Um, so I have some in my car just because, you know, cell phone, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of the technology within cars are added to the radiation uh, load. Yes. So one within there, um, I'm unsure I have one wherever the kids are. And then, mm -hmm. you, you know, usually by TV, especially because, I mean, you, you can feel the heat from the TV alone. So you know that it's radiating off yes. of EMF. So having it there and then also um, the stickers that can go on different uh, yes. devices. So those have been some of the ways that I use it, but I also believe uh, there that the plants, different plants can help assist with clearing some of what is being- Oh, oh yeah, I'm gonna review that now in a few minutes too. Oh, I'm gonna go, go over some of the plants that, um, that help. I also um, call in my auric field whenever I'm anywhere, especially when I'm in the car. And I've noticed a difference when mm -hmm. I don't do that, that I am so exhausted when I get home. But like mm -hmm. if I'm going to the farmer's market and I don't, you know, ask my spiritual committee to rein in, you know, mine and Jade's auric fields and I come home and I feel like everyone's been in my space. But if I mm -hmm. do that, I feel mm -hmm. like I'm able to maintain, you know, my space um, more easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. That that definitely works, you know. Oh, so other things. Thank you for sharing. You know, both of you sharing. You know, ways to mitigate the EMF effects. So um, there's a gentleman by the name of Bill Cottawaller, and he's considered an EMF uh, specialist. And he wrote the book, Expose the Electronic Sickening, Sick, Sickening of America and How to Protect Yourself and Quick and Easy EMF Guide, 99 Tips. But he also on his site has a downloadable book that is free, which is referred to as 10 Ways to Reduce EMFs. And it's on the website, stopdirtyelectricity.com. And then he also provided, it was in this um, uh, interview that he had, he also provided information on a website. It's called antennasearch.com, where you can look up cell phone towers in your area within a two mile radius. All you have to do is just put your address in there. So, um, one way, some ways to minimize the effects of EMFs is keeping the electronics at a distance 
especially on the night table, um, or shut them off. Some people actually move them and put the cell phone in the bathroom, you know, so that you, if you want to keep it on and hear it, but keep it at least six feet away. Un unplugging your appliances when not in use. Disconnect the smart connections to your appliances. So I remember I, I had, I have a, my smart appliance was my uh, decor uh, refrigerator. And I didn't even know. I mean, that was emitting a lot of electromagnetic frequency waves, radiation. Um, looking to carefully look at the power outlets, particularly at the head of your bed, so that you can miti mitigate and stop those, those harmful frequencies while you're sleeping. What I do is there's a, a, a store that, um, uh, a website that I use to purchase EMF protection apparel. So, and I, and in this particular website is called Amrad Deal, and I get the, um, I use the, the uh, head wrap at night around my head to protect me from radiation, the EMR uh, exposure. And then you could actually purchase filters to reduce the amount of radiation in your house. And these are referred to as Greenway filters or Stetzer's filters to filter out the dirty electricity. And then what you do is you use your handheld meters. So that's another thing using getting a handheld meters and looking at the areas in the house, your house that needs most attention. And you can find that and then put these filters in your home. Um, when using the phone, use a speaker. I do that all the time. I don't put my phone against my head. And to put your phone on airplane mode, when carrying it, and then what you do is you download content on your device before placing it on the air, airplane mode. So there, it's fine. We're finding that a lot of young people are sleeping with their cell phones in their bed, and you know many people, you know, they're addicted to it to their smartphones, uh, as we spoke about earlier. So in, in South Korea, there are over a hundred addiction centers for young people addicted to their cell phones which I find very interesting. They're doing something about it. You want to turn off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi after putting your phone on, um, on, on, on airplane mode. And this will cut off almost all the radiation coming from your phone if you do these things. And then there's also an ethernet adapter because ethernet is the best way to go that you can add to your cell phone, reducing significant EMFs coming to you. If you have an Apple device and it says not connected, that means that the device is trying to connect and is it emitting more radiation. So just be aware of that. And you should carry your uh, cell phone off body because tumors have the propensity to grow next to where you're carrying the phone is like colon cancer in the back pocket. You know, the putting the phone against your head is the, a lot of, quite a few brain tumors are coming up. There was an example that um, this, in this interview where they said that, uh, that uh, someone had an abdominal tumor and what they were doing was putting their tablet on top of their stomach at night, looking, surfing the internet. Um, six hours a day in the evening. You can also turn off your router at night. And then alternatively, there is a, a shielding that you can utilize on your router, cutting off the signal that typically the router reaches four homes away, the do doors away. And the site where you can find this is lessemf.com. And the shielding is called the, uh, the tamer. You can, another way to reduce EMFs or e electromagnetic radiation in your homes is replacing any cordless phones with landlines, actual corded phones. And just to be aware that the base of a cordless phone is just as strong as your router. Um, you wanna cut the power of your wireless devices when not in use. 
do not use Bluetooth headsets. So a lot of our young people are doing that. And I don't know if there's a way to get them to stop using that, but it's so detrimental. May I speak to that really quickly? Yes, please. Um, so it's so interesting that you bring that up because I noticed the impacts of using Bluetooth and I ultimately made the switch to just using corded. Um, while it is convenience and we know that convenience is not always uh, beneficial for our health, um, I noticed like I would get headaches or I would get these kind of like lumps around my ears and it would be just mm. like pain that would be there. And then even my ability to just hear and receive uh, guidance was distorted. And mm. mm -hmm. once I started to kind of make the connection and, and minimize it, I could see the clarity coming back. And from that time on, I was just like, yeah, like I understand like with having small children, they like to pull on things, but it was just like, it's worth the, you know, the fuss of having something corded. But yeah, yeah I, I could feel the pressure within that the lobes and within like behind my ears. And mm -hmm. it would just constantly come back every time I would use it. I try, you know, the over the ear uh, Bluetooth, even the ones that are like the buds. And mm -hmm. both of them still gave the same issue. So I'm so glad you brought that up because it's a real thing. And there's even research out in videos that talk about like the um, Apple uh, AirPods specifically, and they measure the EMF radiation that is emitted. And it's, it's almost off the charts. So yeah, 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 we're all just walking around with these devices, not realizing. I don't know how to get it across. Yeah, I don't know how to get it across to our young people. You know, I have somebody that, you know, is near and dear to me and he still wears it. So, you know, the irony of a lot of it is that um, like the big wigs at Apple and Google, they send their children to Waldorf schools that are technology free, nature based. Uh -huh. You know what I yep. mean? Like their kids, like yep. they're not. They know. Yeah, they know. They know. Right, one hundred percent. Yes. You know. If you just think about the name of it, Bluetooth. Like I think about that chakra is is blue. It's the throat chakra. Uh, yeah. And, and it's just like what, closing that what off. Tell us exactly. So like they're eating into our perception and our ability to express and receive information more so, and just blocking off the messages of clarity and what is for our, our good. So right, yeah, it, right. it's, it's a shift that needs to happen. But a lot of people, it's it's a, a fashion statement in a way. And it's just that community. It is. It, it really is. And they, they not only use it to talk on the phone, they use it to listen to their music, go to the gym. You know, it, it, it's, you know, it's addicting. They're looking at the immediate conveniences, but not looking at the long-term ramifications behind it. And so we just have to continue to spread the information and let them know until, you know, anyway. Um, one thing was recommended to move away from microwave ovens. I think most of us here know about that. And then also too, just to be aware of our plants, trees that are between our homes help to reduce electromagnetic radiation. You know, and it also can reduce all types of wireless radio frequency waves, radiation. So it can help to block the electrical fields that's originating from our overhead power lines. And so other plants that we have that can be inside of our home, cacti or the cactus, is considered one of the best plants that it can absorb radiation. Uh, the snake plant can be placed near a computer, also a radiation absorbing, electro EMF absorbing. Spider plants, betel leaf plant has a strong ability to absorb EMFs. The stone lotus is a succulent that holds water, even on growing on, on stones, but also great at absorbing radiation. Aloe vera plants, the ivy plant, because it absorbs radiation, but also absorbs up to 90% of benzene in the air within 24-hour period. The asparagus fern 
It's a strong absorbing plant, EMF absorbing plant, absorbing those EMFs from electronics, but also has antioxidant properties, removing harmful toxins in the air. And guess what? Mustard greens help to absorb EMFs from our electronics, you know, grown, but it also tastes good too. And our rubber plants can help. Does anybody have anything else to add? Well, and mustard greens look so beautiful. We have them growing. Wild. We have like spring super blooms of mustard greens along the highways in California. It's super mm. trippy, but it's gorgeous. Like mm -hmm. it's just yellow everywhere. And it's very, mm -hmm. yeah. It, yeah. It puts it different. I never made the connection with removing EMFs. And I just kind of saw that when they're in bloom, I'm just, I always feel better when I'm driving on these busy roads. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just this, you know, psychosomatic, it looks beautiful. And so I'm in that separate space, or if it is as it's removing things from the air, because it's like hillsides. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, you, you know that energy shifts are subtle. So a lot of people take for granted these energy shifts and changes that we feel, but it's really, you know, the trees are and the, the plant life is life working for us. That's a really good point, right. You know, so that's why, you know, we promote energy supporting practices. Well, and even like the colors, like Stacy was saying, I mean, that just gave me chills when she was talking about the Bluetooth and the chakra and the colors. And then it mm -hmm. made me think when I was burning my clarity wood the other day, it's blue, you know, yeah. and then burning the candles. And so just kind of adding these other layers and bringing the colors to your body more, you know, and, and clearing your chakras mm -hmm. more. Yeah. Right. Right. Color, color therapy, chakra uh, healing. Yeah. Energy healing and helping. And I, you know, it, bottom line we know we're a lot most of us here are property clears clearing the environment you know adding to that adding those colors using the the, the dna salt with the specific colors for those specific areas that we're trying to work on so thank you for sharing that any other comments um just wanted to kind of going back to the having devices in the proximity of certain organs and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Something that I've been reminded of, and I, you know, fell out of practice of not doing it, but the idea of having laptop and devices on the womb and in the uterus areas. Hey, yes, hold on, baby. Um, and how mm -hmm. women and especially girls, we are highly susceptible to causing damage to those reproductive organs and just being mm -hmm. mindful of that and even for males too um, a lot of males carry their phones in their pockets and you know their genitalia is right there so all the impacts that that have on fertility and you know being mindful of that because once that damage is done you know it, it makes it more challenging when they want to conceive so um, just bringing that forward because it's, it's food for thought and a lot of uh, those that are in the childbearing years might not be mindful of that. So, you know, I know I've seen a lot of, you know, women jogging and they might have the fanny pack or, you know, something like the pockets on their leggings and they're carrying their, their phone right there. And it's just like, right. oh my goodness. Right. So all right. those things. To be so they're, they're devices too, because, you know, like I, from that same site, the AMRA deal, I have um, pouches that are EMF protection, EMF, um, you know, uh, protection against EMS for your phone. And I use those all the time to carry it. So then therefore I, it kind of mitigates and we still get the signal because I know one of the concerns for people is, are, are you able to get a signal and get calls? And yes, you do, you do. So, you know, people just have to, you know, do their research and take action and make those changes that'll help them in the long run. You know, there are solutions. Any other comments? I thought this was um, a good discussion and a review.
you can the the recording for this um this clubhouse it will be um posted on my site on my website and like a studio or on youtube and like a studios and um and you could also go on clubhouse and listen to it to get the information with regards to the sites for the resources and with the recording can the um websites be listed in the comments i caught most of them but just so that they're readily accessible yeah oh the com you mean the comments the, or uh, this? for the websites that you mentioned to be listed within the comments because it was quite a few websites that I think oh are... okay that would be like my website the endlicka studio two dot yeah. com it'll be on that okay. one so i'll um that that's my main site and then i also i usually use that this particular um uh call or when i when i call in for the for the clubhouse discussion, I use that and it's kind of, it's label. You can see me flashing right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Thank you for asking. So I hope this information has helped everyone learning ways that they can, you can protect yourself from exposure to EMFs, which is affecting our environment as well. You know, and so let's take action to protect ourselves from its toxic effects. And um, there's been a quite a bit of information that shared that each of us shared. And again, listen to the recording will help if you need to jot some information down. So I would also like to remind everyone of our weekly whole responsibility sessions, 30 minutes, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 6 a.m., 12, 30 p.m., 8 p.m., Eastern Standard Time through Zoom, as well as our extended 45 minute sessions on Wednesday at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can use the same link for each session. So I invite you to join us and commune using the power of Ahonoponopono. And our next Divine Nation workshop is scheduled for next Friday, next week, Friday, not this Friday, next week, Friday, July 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, hosted by Diane Ennis of Enlica Studio One. And the Abundance and Prosperity group call, hosted by Of The Sun, meeting daily, 2.45 and 8.45 p.m. for only five minutes. You know, there's power in numbers and raising the energy, manifesting our abundance in our lives. And you can register to for this to participate in this call on the of the sun website found under meditations and mind the mindfulness tab so thank you everyone for joining and participating in this discussion i look forward to seeing you next week and remember knowledge is power and taking action from this knowledge is true power with honor respect and gratitude and lakesh and veritas and the cash and veritas. And the cash and veritas on respect and gratitude.